is or rewind the hand of the clock at this juncture no matter how crit critical or uh, uh, the criticisms which you put on the table here it's not going to change the fact whether they went wrong or not we should be looking on how we should look it's true that uh, okay so the, how should we move forward yeah yeah we, we, we are talking about the, the uh, uh, southern Cameroon crisis we all know today it is referred to uh, the uh, four-man conference which I think uh, the representatives which uh, uh, senior barrister actually did mention to the best of his knowledge they were not mandated if they were not mandated to represent the people good and fine but they, it all happened we, 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 there's nothing we can do about it we should be looking how we should my my humble opinion here is I am appealing to President probably are the head of state who is the father of this nation. And your party that, chairman? Yeah, uh, yes, my party chairman at this juncture. What legacy is it putting in place now so that the next generational regime or uh, Cameroonians should be talking about his achievements, uh, which I know one of his millennium goals is talking about the 30, 20, 35 uh, uh, emergency uh, achievement of Cameroon. At that which should what we should be talking about. Secondly, looking on how we should put to a ceasefire. I'm talking about the killings, the enormous killings, which it hurts. Okay. The, yeah, it really, really oh, hurts. Back to you. Yeah. Before be, before you 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 take over the mic, I said several times on this platform that I strongly believe I'm convicted that by August we'll be receiving an August guest, which will manifest miraculously for a total ceasefire in southern cameroon crisis okay, okay. yes that is what we should that is our greatest cry okay. of today um i want to on that maybe you uh, want to be asking your barista for coming to about uh, what he just said that we are crying over speed milk and that we should be looking for a way forward but how mm -hmm. do we look for a way forward you guys are legal minds how do we look for a way forward without understanding the context in which the Fuman conference are uh, actually uh, laid the foundation because we cannot be seen our kind of spirit milk. You, uh, no, you say no. Really, it's even it's even being modest by saying spirit milk. To me, the, the milk was washed away a long time ago, so I don't even care about it. But you see, uh, if you notice, Saudi Cameroon at that time, as I say, was attached to a house of assembly in Nigeria. Which means, which meant, as we about we manifested our intention not to join Nigeria by the 11 February, uh, period 1961, there was some sort of a void. There was a legal void between the time the plebiscite occurred and the time the Union Jack was brought down. The Union Jack was brought down on the 1st of October 1961. So it means from February 1961, 11 February 1961, to 1st October 1961. The British were still full in command because under the trusteeship. Yes. So if they were supposed to be in negotiations, it was to be either the full supervision of the British or the British themselves through the Nigerians they do the negotiations. Well, well not that it didn't happen that way. Okay. We had a decentralized unit of management of Sonic at that time. It continued after the plebiscite as if nothing happened. It complete con the same system continued. But Whatever was supposed to be decided by that uh, group of people ruling at that time, between that February 11 to 1st of October, they were supposed to have the signature of the British. They never did. I never had. And that is why I believe strongly that to, to go across this illegality, we need to have, we need to have that referendum in 1972. So we need to. Which became a decision of the people. No matter how you consider the referendum, legal, illegal, legitimate, legitimate, so legitimate, start that, from the to me, that is when that is when our union actually came into uh, came, uh, came, uh, actually was given was given some rebirth because don't forget we were separated by the Mina Simon Agreement of 1999. As we got separated, that document up to date has not been resigned yet. And if you notice, the demarcation that was determined on that date. When the Germans, German Cameroon was divided by French and British, it is still being used in the present day. Yeah. Nobody talking anything about it. So, do we want to go to legitimacy? We should start in 1919 with the, with the Mena Simon Agreement. That is the Minister, the Secretary of State in charge of colonization of Britain, down of Britain, Britain and down of France. 
And when they made that agreement, the League of Nations never resigned it. The United Nations never resigned it. But still, on the contrary, place Cam uh, Cameroons, that is Northern Cameroon, Southern Cameroons, and La Republic Cameroon, in the same type of control by the Western powers, who now brought in their Western languages to mesmerize us, to divide us, and to make us look, look as if we are two different people. But in any case, I'm a legal mind. I have to look at legal. I, I cannot read, go, go, go to something without going to legality. Who gave a mandate to Foncha, Muna, Mbile, and the rest to go to Kufa, to talk on their behalf? To me, I don't. I see that void. Is that not why? So because of that void, that, that's why I say, if you notice in our society, Southern Cameroon society, go to the AAC one. It's a group of people. Go to the AAC two. It's a group of people. Go to the formation of uh, SDF. It's a group of people. The only structure to me that has succeeded is the SDF that finally went back to the people and had their legitimacy and had their votes. All the others is that look, we just decide, everybody has to accept and we'll follow. And that is why we have that problem today. In our minds, it is difficult for us to, to contain certain facts because of that illegality between 11 February 1961 and 1st of October. Now, with the issue of illegality. I want to disagree with uh, uh, Barrister Achu because, uh, you know, when you do elections, there is no way that the, the, the results are implemented on the same date of the ballot. The head of state of this country, for example, is voted and it takes a period of time before he's installed, before he takes the oath. He doesn't take oath the same day that the election, the, the ballot, the ballot that, are cast. That, that, that they yeah, so, petition. Yeah. So what are you suggesting that because the head of state is elected on a certain day and it takes about three months for him to take, oh, that is a legal void? I don't think so. I think that um, the 11th of February was the day of the vote. The day that this vote was to take effect was the first of October. First of October, because yeah, so, and, in the and, and, and so Southern Cameroons continued to be managed as it was managed before ninth, before the plebis seat. The same people who managed continued in office. They did not step down until the date when the Union Jack came down. And so it, I, I think that it's not correct to suggest that there was a legal void. There was no legal void. And secondly, um, but he is saying that in terms of the legal void, the legal void is the people's representation. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. At that time, there was a small West Cameroon government, a uh, Southern Cameroon's government. There was a small government. And that co I, I think that is the capacity in which Foncha went to Fumban. It was a decentralized unit. It, it was not a He said that it, it was the country that already has independent mm, yes. is coming to talk with a country that doesn't have independent. Therefore, it's supposed to be managed by maybe the British are supposed to lead that no. education. Listen, I think that the, the British were not and ought not to have been part of that process. For one reason, it was not the British who were negotiating. It is the people of Southern Cameroons. And at that time, who had the mandate of the people of Southern Cameroons? There was a government led by Foncha. So he had the capacity. I think that that is even beside the point. That's even beside the point. The critical issue is that in Fumban, the people who resolve, even if it was a bad uh, agreement, but they resolve that we should function on the basis of a federal constitution. And there was a clause in that constitution, which my learned friend will agree, which insisted that the federal structure, that federal nature, that provision should not be amended. Now, and, and, and my learned friend believes that uh, this country, the basis of this country started in 1972. I think that 1972 is the biggest fraud constitutional fraud that has ever happened in, in any part of Africa. It's the biggest constitutional fraud. He's saying that to, yes. to him, that, is all, that seemingly may be the only basis. That, um, that is why I'm trying to counter that, that it is the biggest constitutional fraud, gigantic constitutional fraud. Because the people of La Republic de Cameroon did not vote to join Southern Cameroons. They did not vote. So if 
they wanted to suppress the federal structure of the country that decision should have been left with the southern Cameroonians who had voted to join whether now they want to suppress I, I don't know if you're getting the point yeah. now by allowing us the whole country to vote and then it was to be my majority uh, decision when southern Cameroons in by its own very component its own uh, composition was a, a minority so it was obvious it was obvious now what happened between 1961 and 1972 I think that President Bia has been very honest when he said in the Paris peace with more Ibrahim yes that all along there had been a process of assimilation and a, a hidden agenda of assimilation and I think that that is where we are today so that even at Fumban when they even agreed on the on, on, on the federal constitution they did so with some other thinking behind there they, they knew that it was just a way to, to, to you know to hoodwink people along they knew that by 72 it was a gradual process because you discover that by 66 even 1966 political pluralism had been suppressed those were the technical yes, steps that was when we had the most draconian yes. uh, law which was put in place so so you see that it it it, it was mr bia has asked you, you you agree with me but when he said that there was this agenda i don't think that he limited it to when he took power in 82. this agenda had been there from the inception <laughs> you see that you played no no it, it, just like you as we are being played today no not today no even today we have been played no, no, no. but the most important thing is that i am not bound to remain a slave because my father sold me in slavery. I'm not bound to remain a slave. That is too much. Slavery? Yes. Oh. What I'm saying is that if they made an error and we found ourselves where we are, we are not bound to stay there. We are bound to move ahead. And so we, we have to break this chain. And we are going to break it. And, and I think that, you know, for me, you just made reference to the, the crisis Yes, I because yeah. Mr. Munga said a while ago that yes. there's no need crying over spirit when a senior barrister actually said the make has already been washed away. But that's why I'm coming that we cannot talk about the fact that we should not cry because the basis of this crisis is on Fuman conference and the plan is sick. You see, that that is what I was going to say. That when they say that uh, it's spilled make or it's the make has even been washed away, it's a certain language that can incite people. It is this thinking. That has brought us to where we are today because a group of people thought that once we had uh, fumban has passed it has passed no the whole purpose of fumban was to recognize that there are two peoples that is the basis of fumban that there are two peoples and if there is a systematic policy to erase the identity of one 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 uh, 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 part that is where the conflict sets in because you will agree with me that all these things you see the crisis in southern Cameroon it is a crisis of identity people are struggling to reassert their existence as a people and until that fact is accepted we will not come out of the shit until that fact is accepted okay yes um, let me take some few messages. Uh, those of you watching us online f on Facebook, uh, we want to say happy Sunday to all of you. Um, good day to you all. Zhang from Tico, please, sir. Is it in the Fuman Conference? Is it true that in the Fuman Conference we had we or yes was used to confuse our grandparents? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure that was a Fuman conference. I'm sure that was the, uh, the referendum, 1972 referendum. And this other one says, Happy Sunday to you all, Vanessa. I think Barrister Ashu Julius has made my day. This is the first time I'm seeing him objective as possible to say that there was no legality. Then he is a Southern Cameroonian by blood. <laughs> um, this other reader says, uh, Happy Sunday to you. Great program. Barrister Ashu has changed. <laughs> I think there are a lot of messages, but we'll not take some of the messages now. No, uh, let me come back to you. Um, <laughs> don't know my road. Don't know the road. <laughs> <laughs> but Sir Ashley just said there was no legality yeah. that the people who represented us had no legality to represent us, which uh, by Sankiatu said no uh, that they had legality. 
And Mr. Mungwa, maybe you want to react to what the legal minds have been saying here? Yes, of course. Uh, that's, it is becoming uh, quite interesting uh, when I hear uh, television was uh, saying uh, Boris Delcho is quite objective. I think we found ourselves on the platform here to be realistic and uh, be honest to Cameroonians and uh, beyond. Uh, some of us who happen to have uh, stretched further in carrying analytical research, uh, we cannot wave history away. Yes. There's no way. We so are you taking back your statement that we should not care about I am, statement? I am not taking back my statement. No. No way. I, I won't. When I say we cry about spill milk, I still insist and I oversize on that statement. In which perspective do I make this statement? Like uh, Boris Akia just said, uh, it's kind of incitement where I use that statement. I don't see any excitement in it. The reality and the truth about it is that it was a waterloo it was a fiasco it was a failure let's acknowledge the fact what we're talking now we're talking history we're talking backgrounds and what's the way forward i mean our representative elders seniors at the time they did their best in their capacity to see how they could get the way and himself was of the opinion of the stay within the uh, 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 French uh, uh, governance in Cameroon. John Goldfoncha was up to open No, I think Endele wanted uh, Southern Cameroon to shift to Nigeria, a uh, point of correction. And uh, John Goldfoncha insisted about remaining within La Republic. And uh, with my few analytical research, honestly speaking, if you can still search now and do some references, Bamenda city or town, which we talk now, was invaded by Nigerians, and uh, the truth is that uh, you, you, yeah, you, you, yes, you find you find the the, the traders who were in the, 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 the Bamenda main market. Once you pass, it's a policy which existed at the period we're talking about. When you pass around, you do oh, eye shopping. The privacy. Yes, you can do eye shopping. You can do eye shopping. You do eye shopping, but you have no right to stretch your hand to touch any good. Uh, of, of any Nigeria, once you talk, it's a touch and carry. Whether you have money in your pocket or not, you are obliged to pay and take away that commodity. Yes, or you're beaten and then jail. So, I see of the opinion whether Foncha was wrong or right at that juncture, but he, when you look at some of those tortures which our fathers and the elderly people were on the way at that moment, there was just no reason why Foncha could have driven Southern Cameroon. No, we are not looking at the driven nature. What we are looking at is, okay, we are basing now on the, on, the, on the content of Fumba. There was no content of Fumba because yeah. in Fumba we were told that they, they resorted that they would move to the Yaoundé Tapatai Conference in 1961, that is in August, which we had uh, Christopher S. Eastward from the British who led the, which, who, who led, which, uh, he led the British delegation and Foncha led that of Southern Cameroon. And still at the Yaoundé conference there was not still that uh, mutual agreement that was reached at in terms of the federal constitution because it was not ratified by both by the federal uh, assembly because there was a course a year that uh, state that um, the federal constitution will go operational on 1st of october 1961 and that must be ratified by the federal assembly which has to ratify that constitution but that was not the case yes uh, coming back to your references and uh, analysis uh, no consensus was arrived at true or false you should answer that so because uh, but, but, you, uh, have said no yes, of course no consensus so are you agreeing either. with the guys who are saying that but do we do we do, do we need to keep hanging on no, it let me ask no I'm so, making time so, on so, that. so the basis of this crisis in north and southwest is not because of what you say we should not hang on it yeah of course it is referred to that good and fine but at this juncture what is the way forward? What solutions Obviously, should we bring? What measures should we look in order to ameliorate? Let me ask you again the question. Maybe Barista may want to add. Uh, because Barista confirmed the fact that there was no legality in those who were supposed to represent the Southern Cameroonians at the level of the Fuman Conference and which moved over the illegality moved to the uh, the Yaoundé Chapatai Conference in August 1961 and the illegality led to the 1972 referendum and which we are still talking about the same illegality and so does it mean that those who are advocating and stating that there was no union treaty that nothing was done they still have another premise to hang on on the federal constitution yeah Javis please no, Barista, no, before, no, no. before 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 Barista comes in I, I just want to appeal that at this juncture so far yeah, they did 
they are the most best and so far we, we, we i mean we're talking about 50 60 years ago and uh, where we are hanging here now what's the legal what, what's the legacy we're putting in place now to in order to move forward their failure or achievers at that at, at, in 1972 or 61 at what, what are we what, what what are we doing we, we should be talking about our contributions and looking how we can move Cameroon forward so that the, the generations behind should, I mean, see a, a generational change and a movement. Oh, yes. You would agree that you cannot be thinking how to move forward without looking where you're coming from. That, that's true, Ronald. Yes. History cannot be way behind. Yes. Yeah, so history was mixed past and uh, from history we can now correct ourselves and we forge ahead. You know, you know what, what I think very uh, strongly is that we, I mean, with reference to the assertion that there was no union treaty, and so the the supposed union between Southern Cameroons and the Republic of Cameroon does not stand. But you want to imagine that um, in 1961, after the plebiscite, President Amadou Ahijo filed a case with the International Court of Justice. Uh, sorry, so you in assembly. He, he filed a case. Yes, yes, yes. He filed yes. a case with mm -hmm. the ICJ. Yeah, mm -hmm. sorry, sorry. I, I, I think we're not taking the mic from uh, Barista Julius. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 There was a case which I filed, challenging the outcome of the plebiscite in which no, no, the other was. part mm -hmm. voted to join Nigeria. Because we seem to be thinking that this whole thing is just the plebiscite of 61, it's just Southern Cameroon that was involved. There was nothing British There was another Cameroon. case of nothing British, Brit Cameroon. Not British Cameroon. There was nothing British Cameroon, there was Southern British, uh, British, Cameroon. Southern Cameroon. Cameroon. British Northern Cameroons. Now, Ahijo had contested the outcome of the, uh, the plebiscite result in which the British Northern Cameroon voted to join Nigeria. And the ICJ ruled that that decision was binding. Mm. Now, when you interpret it from a legal perspective, when you give that judgment of the ICJ illegal, you then say that if the ICJ can rule that the election, the, the plebiscite outcome was binding for British Northern Cameroons, you could apply that the same interpretation for the plebiscite outcome of British Southern Cameroons. So that is to say that whether there was it, a, a union treaty or not, it doesn't really make sense. I think that what is crucial is the fact that people voted. Whether they voted rightly or they voted wrongly, it's a, a topic of discussion for some other time. But there was a vote. Yes, I agree with you. Yes. That's why I was saying in 1972, whether rightly or wrongly, yes. people voted. In 1972, yes. and up to date, nobody has challenged the legality of that referendum. We only see, we see, I talk Challenge about it where? Go to court. I do went to where? So you, well, you, don't, you see, yes, wait, yes, let me learn. Yes, yes. Let me, you have said a quote, I do. Yes. In that, you, if you read the judgment very well, yes. the, the General Assembly of the United Nations refused to entertain the case on the basis of an exception that they were incompetent. Yes. They never decided on the substantive of the but matter. It went to the the substantive issue was yes. never decided upon up yes. to date. The substantive issue, whether it was legal to make the plebiscite or not, was not entertained. Up to date. You yeah. check the judgment. Yeah, well, but you see, what I'm saying is that, uh, yes, we, you know, politics is a game. I will not expect Aijo to come and see a country like Southern Cameroons and have it opposite of grabbing it, I will not grab. If it's you, you will do the same. But you see, it, it's a matter of using the psychology of people at that time to get what you want. But we see, we ourselves went there. Like uh, we usually say, they, they thought it's like okay. uh, they would like that to get the boxing ring, but he has very short hands. Yeah. So when they very short hands, yeah. and that's why our, our the, the reach of our box, uh, the, the reach of our, our arms never could touch the other party. Okay, and that was suffering. That's why I say we've been making that mistake over and over, and we're still making it. Let no, me be to be to Briefly, be. So I'll take our guess yes. who is on standby. To be to be. Let me just make one clarification. To say that the, nobody has ever challenged the outcome of the, of, the, of the referendum is not very true, because you remember that you don't need the whole country, the whole all the people of Southern Cameroon to go to court to challenge that. You remember the case that was filed in Banjul before the African Commission by Gwangumne and a handful of other people and Scapo. The basis 
of that decision of that case if you look at the facts you look at the decision was that they believed that 1972 uh, referendum was a fraud that was the whole thing they argued and that from 1972 onwards there have been this aggressive policy of assimilation suppressing all the uh, economic viability strength of southern cameroons in favor of the a French speaking pattern and all those things and the court the, the, the African Commission made a recommendation. I agree. I do the judgment. Yes. That was right. So I think that but who sent them? Did you on their behalf or mine? You see that's what I'm talking no, about. They don't need to get your, your that, is why, that, is why, that is why that is why that is why executing is a problem because if they went on their own senior their own own. You see that's what I'm saying. You all you need to do is last time in, uh, this panel you said a Camerounian has a right to take a government to court yes when it comes to constitutionality yes. challenge the constitutionality so, so, the same thing he's so, saying, so I'm saying that <laughs> challenge, no, no, no. i don't need to come to you and put a ballot say give me yes, money to go and yes, file that's it yes. so by so doing yes. it is you you said this constitution this, this rule of the constitution does not apply to me you cannot say it don't apply to me, and you say me. But maybe the, the, the problem they, is that, eh? you see, yes. uh, that's what I say, we have, we have to be Democrats. If you want to represent the people, represent the people, get their mandate. When well, once you go on a long, uh, a long voyage, by the consequences alone, but you will not force it on the people. You are not push it down the senior people. Senior Barisa Ashu, no last, how good last, week, last week, where we t uh, I think two weeks ago, where we talked about the context of decentralization, you raised the issue that if, the, if, a, if a citizen feel like it's not moving well or something is wrong a citizen can take the yes. state to court yes, it's sure better. so the same citizens who sat under the premise of we uh said we the southern because if there are two or three they are southern Cameroonians. No, no, no. so, the, 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 so the premise of we has to be is i not we you see what you no. do for i well, maybe he should learn and yeah, tell us what happened be, because if you look at the parties the way the parties were constituted they did not say that uh, they are speaking for Barrister Archie Julius and some other people. Because by someone just decided to speak for me. No, Barrister Archie Julius sitting oh, here. No, his was, his no logical no sequence no is never disconnected from his political platform. It's never disconnected, and that is what you want to see. That all the people who constitute themselves as the plaintiff in that case, none of them was a CPDM militant. None of them was a CPDM. Who told you that? I'm telling you from factual, none of them was a CPDM. Rather, the state sent people there, of course, from CPDM background, to go and argue that it was a case. And it was, the outcome was clear. But what we are trying to say is that there is no time. There is what you call public interest litigation. When you're doing public interest litigation, you don't, you don't, you don't necessarily need to, to yes to go and hold a rally or hold some election for people to endorse you to give you that capacity. You, if you are part of the community that is affected, you have a right. Now, and that is interesting to note that at the time that action was filed, the government sponsored another team of people led by Oben Isaac Oben. To go to Banjul and say they wanted to withdraw the case and come and discuss. And the government was very active talking with those people at the time. Those people had the mandate from where? So you see, let's let the government. Yeah, no, no, no. no. The, the government, government. <laughs> you, you, you see, you see, you see, you, we are discussing <laughs> things. We are discussing things. This is a legality to appoint a group of people to discuss. The government, we voted see, it. We voted that, that is the sense of deception. Where the parliament, the parliament did not sit to no, talk about that because, because the parliament the time, deception no. lies for as if no. everybody was stupid. Barrister Andrew, you think everybody is so stupid that they can be deceived? Barrister Andrew, lies and they follow. Barrister Andrew, I don't agree. No, Barrister Andrew, what I want to ask from somebody who militates very strongly in the party that you belong have you heard of any motion given the current crisis in this country in parliament by the cpdm party looking trying to look for ways to solve this problem yeah, first of all uh, no those are the people that we have uh, my, my who my have been elected right first, who have the mandate yeah who have the mandate no, no, of course so, so if they don't discuss so it, Belamo, he said it, it was on tv he filed a motion on TV. What are you talking about? No. When Belamukita was CPDM, Chibuketa has filed motions on TV. 
All of us are the motion, but the motion. But the, 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 you see, you see. Well, let me maybe, just, maybe we'll, let's 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 take on someone who's on Skype or standby who we'll come in. Let him tell us. Yeah, some, uh, let, let him tell us what we are. Yes. So let's get you. Let's get you. Let's get you. Hello. Um, it seems that like we have a connection issue there. Are, are you with us? Um, maybe Barista, why, why is, oh, he said maybe you want to react briefly? Yeah, you see, uh, we always get ourselves wrong when we mix up party issues with important discussions like this. Yeah. It's, just because, it's just because I feel, I feel all of us don't have the same level of information on certain issues. Yeah. But I don't want to go to party politics. But in any case, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a realist. I feel I feel when I want to do things, I feel to say, look, this is what we have. What do we do about it? I didn't bring with them here. You're bringing it down. But that is, you see, those are the type of things on the contrary that excites, as you say, using yes, your words. Yes, yes, we don't do that. Mm -hmm. well, in any case, CBDM or no CBDM, CBDM or no CBDM, what I know, the topic I came here for was on the Fuman Conference, yeah. which I say, what I like it not, it was a party, as if I was invited to the party, and eat and drink and dance, and it came out and went away. The, at that point in time, I am very certain that Aejo saw the illegality and benefited from it and placed and uh, used and uh, mesmerized all these guys, played their political egos and had what he had. I don't blame Aejo for that. That is politics. He never killed anybody. He never forced anybody. And don't, don't, for, don't forget that by that time we were going to the Fuma, Fuma conference, it was at the height of the Magisa war. That time. It was bad in that area, so I don't know how they managed to go there and came back without any problem. It was there was war in that area, the, the western region, right to right, right to Fuman at that time. But, and you see, tell me, what type of conference is this that there is no preparatory meeting? There was no preparatory meeting. Yeah, on the Fuman conference yes, by both parties, they sent emissaries to go and sit down first of all. They talk out the main points before coming calling in the so-called government to come and sit down and talk. They were known because to be. I just saw that void. I just saw the illegality and used it. But you see, at that time, we didn't catch it. It took a lot of time for us, for some of us, or let me say, for some of us to catch it, that, that is what happened. And I don't blame him. I will not blame him because President Bia said clearly that they tried to do, uh, he said in joining by intervention, what they went in for, why we're going in for joining by having to talk with our brothers, they were going in for joining with integration. And that, that's what we're doing till President Bia said it recently, okay. which means that it has to be a halt about that method. Okay. And so all that method is going to come into place. I want to come, uh, let, me, let me learn, right now, right right now, we are on decentralization. Okay. Saudi Cameroon was decentralized at that time. Let's get to, let's get to, let's get back on Skype and get what, what um, a, a friend has, to, uh, uh, his own contribution. Good afternoon, uh, Mr. Jervis and uh, my fellow panelists. So uh, I'd like to uh, thank uh, Mr. Jervis for having me on this panel. Here is the thing. <clears throat> I've been listening to all the barristers and, you know, there's been a lot of uh, historical rewritings and everything. I mean, for the most part, uh, historians have uh, written about, experts have written about all the historical uh, aspects that went down. Uh, in the Fuman Conference, I'm talking about Professor Victor Judas Gore, Professor Anyangwe, and the words of others. We we know that uh, multiple things went wrong. I mean, everyone is doing the historical writings and the legal aspects of those things. What actually went wrong is that the, we had external factors. Of course, we can talk about the external factors leading to the Fuman Conference. We know about uh, the, the role that the Cold War played in, in the whole, uh, leading up to the plebiscite. We know the role uh, the, the French uh, government played and the British government. So those are the external factors. But in terms of what went wrong with the internal players, we know that uh, the, premier, the, the Premier, the PM, John Goof Honcher, had the draft constitution, and he was supposed to revise that with, with his delegates, but we know, we know what happened. That didn't happen. And also the time, the, the stalling that uh, uh, the President Aijo had to uh, carry out, you know, 
the delegates didn't have enough time to go through the constitution. I think that they were given three days, the, dele the Southern Cameroon's delegate. And so we have all of this. And uh, I think it is very important for us to know that in as much as all of these illegalities happened and uh, some, some uh, resolutions were reached at, at the Fuman Conference or so after the Fuman Conference of, in terms of the flag, the, the star, and then the anthem and all of those things. And later on, uh, the tripartite uh, uh, conference that took place, there was one very important uh, point that was supposed to be uh, mentioned. At the tripartite conference, it was stated that any proposal for the revision of the present constitution, that is the federal constitution, which impairs the unity and the integrity of the federation, shall be inadmissible. And proposals for the revision shall be adopted by a simple majority vote of members of the Federal Assembly, provided that such majority includes a majority representative of each of the federated states. So either the majority from the Southern Cameroon or uh, from West Cameroon or East Cameroon. So this was what was agreed at the tripartite conference. And so the 1972 uh, uh, referendum that was carried out by Aijo, indeed, that was illegal. It was not supposed to happen. And so haven't uh, haven't had that those those are the reality that is what we have that is what we face now and so as someone was saying the way the way forward is for us to revisit the, the uh, that's the crux of the matter the, the problem at the foundation of it the the problem was changing that federal structure so i would i would like to say moving forward i would like to subscribe to uh the opinion of uh I think Dr. Uh, Dr. Nick Wanyamu talks about the, the Confederacy. We, in order for us to have a sustainable, those who subscribe to a united and a sustainable Cameroon, it is very important that we go back to the Confederacy principle, which is the principle that was, even in pre-colonial Africa, there was a principle of Confederacy where consensus was reached. Um, uh, maybe I'll uh, come back to you. Uh, let's take some, some few messages. Barrister, um, Evin Nyonga Banmir, excuse me, Nyonga Mia from Buya, right, he says the way forward with this crisis in Northwest and Southwest is to get back to the people of the Southern Cameroon through a free and informed, free, informed and democratic process for them to decide a referendum like the comprehensive peace agreement that was signed by the Sudan and the Republic of Sudan, which has to be done in the presence of the United Nations. Maybe you agree with him? I like legality in a democracy. I don't like where a group will sit down and decide issues for you and me. I like to I like to participate. In this and the way to participate is by voting. I agree with that guy, with my learned colleague, that we should we need if we need to decide on certain issues, it should be legitimate in the sense that we go to the people and ask them what they want, not dictate on the people what, what we want. But you see. This chapter title, as he's talking, the chapter of the, the 60s. Because the chapter that was coming. There was a chapter in 1992. Yes. That came, that decided on the constitution in 1996. There was another chapter title. Don't forget that. But if you notice, why it has been failing? It is because it is something from a group of people and not from all the people. But, um, or, or the majority of the I people. Think, no, um, I, I think that... Uh, maybe you react to this. Um, yes. Uh, Justice Aya, Paul Abine, stated that the 1996 constitution, it was not... Um, it was not a new constitution, but it was a revision of the constitution which had been based on false premise. Yeah, today. I think I think even the constitution we have today, if you look at it, when it is cited, it is cited as the 1972 amended constitution of 1972. So, but what whatever that means for me is not the issue. What is important, and I think that uh, Barisan Yombami has captured it properly. Mm -hmm. That is where we have the problem, in which I was saying before that if there was supposed to be a referendum in 72, it was only the people of Southern Cameroons that should have been given the, 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 the right to vote because it affected them. And so even today, to decide what the way forward, it, 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 it's, it's so easy. Through a referendum debate, you know that that has been demanded severally. In, when I was a young school boy, I was in university at the time, around 92, there was something that we did. We, we collated votes. People were signing their names and marking yes or no, some kind of signature referendum. 
was organized by AAC people at the time. Uh, five Visha, he was he coordinated, and you could see the reflection of people at the time. Um, well, you can say that at that time there was no person supervising. With, a group of people. Yes, uh, you can say there was no person. But I think that the way out of this, whatever that there was Fumban, there was no Fumban, is that Southern Cameroonians should be given the opportunity to decide what they want for themselves. Whether they want to even stay as part of this country or not. Whether they want to move out completely. I said it the last time that in whatever constitutional framework we will have in this country, there should be that clause where the people of Southern Cameroons who always have the right to determine, maybe in 10, 15 years, whether they want to remain part of the union. It is something that can work. Because if you know that you have the right to leave, if you know that you can exercise it, the other party works consciously to keep you, if they want to keep you. If they want you to go, they will, they will do work in such a way that you have to leave. So I think that the, the workable formula is that people should be able to decide. Okay. Yes. Um, let me yes. come to Mr. Mungwa. The Yaoundé chapter, the Fuman conference moved to the Yaoundé chapter that conference because the follow-up was in the Yaoundé chapter that conference, which was expected that degrees. I mean, uh, um, there will, there will be legality as uh, Senior Vice Ashu articulated that things will be signed. The constitution will be signed. Remember that in the Fuman conference, there was no virtual agreement signed somewhere. Well, that's why some group of people are saying that there's no union treaty. Coming back to that. I moved to resolution 1608, but that's a topic for another day because next week Sunday I want us to look at the 1972 referendum so because that should be the, the basis on that we should, should be moving forward. How legal was it or what's the way forward as far as that is concerned? But Mr. Mungwa, on the federal constitution, the, the chapter of that uh, 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 conference in 1961, the first point was that the federation will go operational as of 1st October 1961, and the Aijo and Funcha will be president and vice president respectively, and there's a provision which stated that the, the, there would be a federal legislator of 50 members comprising 40 from the Republic of Cameroon National Assembly and 10 from Southern Cameroon House of Assembly, and the provision of the federal constitution will remain operational until 1st April 1961, upon which it will not be changed, and if the form of the federation has to be changed, that <laughs> there's a, strict, a strong provision for that and we are talking about decentralization now is it not because of the fair policy of or the, the fair premise that we had with the Fuman conference that has caused this cacophony of people struggling not to want to use the word federation and using the word decentralization and not fully implementing you are of the tuba uh, council yes uh, i am of the tuba municipal council and uh, i would uh, want to add my voice again to what the legal minds have been saying here yeah? and our televiewers are still insist my humble opinion uh, when you look the collective uh, factors which transpired within the Fuman conference uh, you will find the negative and the positive outviews which are uh, welcoming to, to others, and uh, uh, others will equally differ. This transpired under the regime of uh, President uh, Majo Ahijo, and uh, President Pobia today was a young administrator by then. And uh, I am appealing and calling on President Pobia. The chairman. Yes. <laughs> to allow a legacy if he is stepping down tomorrow <laughs> or whensoever that he should you review we should not be talking about <laughs> the full man conference anymore is that a please, sign is no, that please. a sign to say that no, um, please please please, please uh, Jabez, permit me land <laughs> no i just want to throw i don't want you to to, to to clarify the air because as uh, bison kia just you said something and he threw something on the floor i by sign calling for the president to resign or saying that he's failing i am not calling for a change of regime <laughs> no that is not what i mean here i am calling on uh, an appeal on my party chairman uh, he was a young administrator by the time President uh, Amado Ahijo presided over the Fuman Conference. And uh, today he is the father and uh, number one citizen of Cameroon. Uh, what legacy is he putting in place? 
Uh, he has done a lot, but well, I'm still appealing. He, we, I think tomorrow, next tomorrow, we should be talking about the Renovative United Cameroon Conference. Okay, so you are proposing another conference, the Renovative. Yes. Meaning that the major national dialogue was not renovative enough to, that we have the estimated decentralization. I have said it on this platform, <laughs> time without number, that an inclusive, genuine dialogue should be reorganized. Uh, 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 I've said okay, that time without number. Okay, we are slowly, but yeah, to yeah, an on, end. Honestly, let's So, uh, so far, uh, regarding uh, the, all the collective factors and uh, uh, ideologies which led to the Fumban Conference, which we are actually talking here today, uh, I've think the way forward we should be looking on the way forward and uh, i have this ideology and a proposal of uh, a renovative united cameroon okay. which president pobia should put in Thank place you. and uh, secondly i'm also appealing on the ceasefire what innovative conference that is you should tell us what you think about what should be the content what yeah. should they discuss yeah. there yeah so, so far i mean we're talking about democracy and we're talking about democracy is bringing uh, okay. a, a democratic approach to the doorsteps of uh, the Cameroonians. We are we, we were talking here on okay, the platform thank you. based on the House of Commons, <laughs> which I think uh, uh, <laughs> every <laughs> stakeholder. Yes, yes, yes. Let me let me let me bring one fact. You see, we are, we are this controversial. We accept the federal constitution that never went through a federal referendum. We accept it. Eh? A group will sit and decide federal constitution. But, but there has been still. We say that's a group of thought that what, says what is that a referendum? Constitution. What is a referendum? We say it's a fraud. Because you see, that's where we don't get it right. Somebody like Senior no. Barista Ashu Emmanuel said the federal constitution was just a fraud because it was not. It was a constitution from the Republic of Cameroon, which was not a constitution from the Southern Cameroon. I don't want Cameroon to, never had that. I don't want to use that. So there are still. There are still. Use the word fraud. That is what excites. That is what excites people over. Yeah. Nothing. Frankly speaking, that constitution never went to the Saudi Cameroon Parliament. Frankly speaking, it was signed by Dojo's uh, President Ijo and Prime Minister John Gu Frank, Frankly speaking, frankly speaking, there was no referendum. No, that's that's but, sanction. But, but that, 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 that are you also. suggesting frankly that? Speaking, frankly speaking, yes. The only time the people of Saudi Cameroon have ever been consulted were in 19, 11 February 1961 plebiscite and the 20 May 1972 referendum. Never again. But along the line, I see people challenge the legality of the, 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 the referendum where people are, are consulted than what people do in parliament. People prefer to prefer, people seem to prefer what a group of people sit down and think to put in place for everybody to accept. Let, and that's where our problem is. Let button the like now, like now. Okay, we are now a decentralized unit whereby you find out every councillor comes from a county or from a village. We don't use the opportunity. To push forward the idea because you understand that Front Chamuna in those days was just a decentralized unit of Nigeria. We still have the same thing now. Yeah. Instead of profiting or benefiting from these circumstances, yeah, okay. to push forward, push forward what we want. We are not using it, we challenge it. No, we we are, as, as I, I, my, I know we don't have time. I know we don't have time. I know we have about two minutes to conclude, but briefly, let me just ask you this. Amunga raised an issue, uh, which is uh, the issue that he wants a, 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 a conference, a new conference. Okay. But uh, uh, the young the chapter that conference, till where we are now, Senior Barrister Ashu, will you agree with the, because you are talking about the issue of legality, are you indirectly giving the green light to the separate who say there's no legality and by law which is a legal mind if there's no legality we should go back and look at the legality and adjust so that we move forward i can never join the separatists because they take decide to take a gun no i'm talking about the, the, no, the, the no. as a pick of up legality. guns to me i'm not i can never talk on their behalf in any case they, everybody has a right to his opinion okay and we should learn to respect that to me today as i'm saying we have uh, a special status it is for us to seize it and make it look what we want what, it to look what like. What is the special so many things that everybody is saying, what is the special status? Mm -hmm. We are supposed to make that status special. Not some other person, not the government, no, no, you see. not the political party. Because, let me tell you something, because yeah. in the councils, we have everybody from each village, or even from even the big town, from each quartier. Go and check it out. So it means it is possible to get the idea from the grassroots right to where it matters. Instead of using the opportunity, 
will not challenge this sensitive to know what is it. Okay. And we prefer no. the special stages that we had with Nigeria <laughs> in the 60s. Is briefly, is and, and, and maybe we uh, react on this so that we can conclude. We are briefly, yeah, I would say that briefly. I would say that so, so this whole conclude. idea of decentralization is another farce because before the whole idea of decentralization we still had council with council also also coming from the cartes what has changed that has made this you say now there is a special status what is the special status we are going to make it special i mean you what, is it? The what is it a legal man can be asking it? the question not yes you cannot because because i prefer somebody from the no that enters the the because that it, 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 not you no that is what, what i'm saying. saying the status no that's what i'm saying that's the that, idea that it is nothing you give me the status. It is nothing. It but is just another phrase. The special status is provided for by the Constitution, first of all. You, you, you know that? It is provided for like, by the Constitution, Article 62. If I'm, I'm that right. is, that, that is not what we are. I'm not saying that it's not provided. So I'm asking you that what is special in Southwest and Northwest that gives them the House of Chiefs? No. no, I mean, I mean, that is what is there. Special, so what is it? No, I mean, I mean, it's what is it? I mean, it's special. No, let me finish. Let me, let me, let me finish. Let me finish. Let me finish. I'm just trying to say that I'm it is another farce. It's another farce. We have, if this country, yeah, if this country must work, we must come back to the drawing table. And I said this before that federalism worked. It worked well. The reasons for suppressing federalism was not that the people were not consulted. That was not a reason. So this we are just trying to imagine to give more reasons for why why the 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 the, 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 the fraud of seventy two took place. The whole idea that Ahijo argued was that it was expensive to manage. Now we have ten regional assemblies. Then there were just two or three, the federal assembly and two. Ten regional presidents. Yeah. Now we have ten. No, there are only two regional assemblies, and two regional councils. Let me get the two. What we have west of the moon is. Well, the most different well, east of the Mongo. So east of the Mongo, what do you call them? Regional councils. Yeah, but it's the same thing now. We have regional assemblies. It's, what it's what I'm same. saying, what I'm saying, no, 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 what I'm saying, uh, Barista Achu, is that these regional uh, 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 councils, are they, not, are they not in the form of an assembly? No. People meet there and discuss. What do they do there? <laughs> yes, of course, they are. Ah. It's an assembly. It's an assembly. Yeah. The special stages we had in... Uh, with Nigeria, it's almost the same thing we have now. Yeah. Okay, you refuse it. But the regional assembly, the regional assembly has not even had their first ordinary session so, so. since when they were voted till now. <laughs> yes. Yes. Some yeah. have. Yeah. Yeah. Some have already. We can. Some kind of regional councils are meeting. Yeah. Some, wait, 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 no, wait, wait, what I'm saying. My point. The, the point I was making is that. Okay. No. No. The point. The point I was making is that if in '72 Ahijo argued that it was expensive to manage the uh, West Cameroon House of Assembly and the East Cameroon House of, together with the, the federal legislation. We are saying, that, okay, just take only Northwest and Southwest. They have two regional assemblies, plus the National Assembly, plus Senate. Put the war on it. Which is more expensive now? Why is it not logical? But it's actual, you did not take part with us when we went to the streets in 2016. I don't, I'm always sitting yes, there. Yes, yes, yes. We were in Dwala when we came there. <laughs> I said, you were in Dwala. We have <laughs> a problem. <laughs> so, <laughs> when we went to the streets in 2016, we were asking a return because we believe that that was the only thing that could pacify, they break the ice. They said we could talk anything but not the form of the state. Right? The, 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 the Prime Minister came down, made us talk to people, talk, they talk, say anything, but don't talk about the form of the state. And we are saying that we must talk about the form of the state. And we are talking about it now. Yes, we must talk, talk about it. About yeah. it. And we are asking that a dispensation that will work for this country is one that takes us back at least to 61. Because and we have it. Yes. It is in the Constitution. No, we are not in 61. We are not in 61. We should go back to 61. That poverty that we had in. 1972, we don't have it now. The country is rich enough to manage what they have. <laughs> oh, so, 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 That's the difference. They, 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 yes, yes, yes. yes. <laughs> There's no time. I think we, I really <laughs> would have loved that we had, uh, we had time. There's no time. Um, next week Sunday, we'll look at the 1972 you, you, referendum. If any talk, member here may have time, you can yeah. join the team because we have senior barrister, actually, Emmanuel, and I'm sure we'll equally have um, some other persons. But before we take leave of you people all year, um, maybe your last word, senior barrister, before we go, I think um, 
the last conclusive word, where do we go from here? Because we've seen that he said there was no legality of a representative of the Kuman Conference from Southern Cameroonians, and that we were still a decentralized state from uh, the Nigeria, though a quasi state with an assembly, and that based on this, we should look forward from 1972 and make the regional council work and look at the special status and make it special. Maybe, how do we make it special? Yeah, last word. My, my problem is that the first thing is that all of us agree that in the 60s, the Southern Cameroons were better, it was better. It was a decentralized area managed by us in a particular degree. We have the same possibilities now. Why can't we seize it and use it? You see, in politics to me, they usually say half a bread is better than nothing. When once you go for the national cake, you can, you can get a piece of it, take it first, and say, I want some more. Don't say no, I'm not taking it unless you give me half. Take it first and say, I want some more. I want your strong to get that more. At the same time, you're bringing development to your people. That's how we do in politics. Not that we just say no. And when you say no, no everybody, nobody, everybody who doesn't agree with you is an enemy. We should stop that. Okay. We should pacify ourselves and agree to disagree. Say, look, I know that this man don't share my ideology. But every day I see you, I will say, good morning. I will talk to you. I will not see you and tell you about because you and me don't agree. Which means that, those two the, the that, argument, that's not the argument of force. Yeah. Yeah. Not even that. I don't want to go to the <laughs> argument. I don't want you to go there. But I want to say that all of us love our country, mm -hmm. Osaru Cameroon, Nauru Cameroon, Center, whatever, at the same level. Okay. But let nobody think that he loves my own village Never more than me. Okay. Until he tells me that what he wants my village, I should accept it or he kills me. That should stop. That should no, stop. no, but Barrister Achu, you see, <laughs> you, why, you why? conclude, you conclude. Yes. Let me, let me, <laughs> um, uh, Mr. Amungwa, you have the time to react on your own conclusion. Mr. Amungwa, I'll ask you before we take leave of you. Yeah, I'm still Briefly, of because we're out of time. Yeah, I'm still of the opinion that uh, uh, we we shouldn't. It, it's true that uh, the Foreman uh, Conference uh, they, they play their role. They, they allow history, and uh, that is what we are trying to revise today. And if we are revising, we come up with revisions for a renovative way forward okay. that is that is that's what Thank the 21st uh, 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 century requires of okay. us so we should not embark much on the Fumban <laughs> conference what is the way forward i mean we should be looking the what, what, conference? what may yes we know we we will put in place a ceasefire <laughs> and get back our economies booming we well, are telling your chairman that you should call for a ceasefire but of course we need a ceasefire i said this we need a ceasefire <laughs> We need the Cameroon economy to get Thank back to, to, to the platform. Okay, on the same no, no, for, for, for me, yeah. if I may say something, I just want to, to, to say that if we are where we are, it's not big. The people didn't get up one morning and went to the bush with guns. That is not true. You know, Barista Achu, that there has been a build up. There was something called Cameroon Anglophone Movement. There was AAC1. People were talking. People were talking. They were talking. And the government refused to listen. There was AAC2. They, they, they refused to list it. Right? Then the lawyers stepped in. They refused to list it. And then some boys went into the bush. Violence is a form of agitation. It's a form of agitation. Whether we like it or not. This is not the... No, I said, well, no I'm saying that whether we like it or not, there are countries that have been independent today or that have achieve some form of better democracy because some people took up arms yeah we, we, yes we, we, we know yeah, they're still fighting so we, what we are saying we is that can, this, this last word there's yeah. no time yeah. Yeah. so we, we can say that we, we don't like we know they 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 that is, that is because of our opinion let, let him conclude. But, but i think that if they have been given the opportunity to talk if the government had been courageous enough to organize that small referendum in southern Cameroon, we will not be where we okay. are today. Thank you very much, Council. Um, yeah, last word, Andy, before we go briefly. Um, thank you very much. Uh, maybe uh, thank you, Barista Nkia, for coming. It's been a privilege to have you. We appreciate. Thank you, Jarvis. Uh, maybe you take our greetings to the people of Boya. They used to call it legendary, the town legendary <laughs> hospitality. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Mungwa, for coming. Yeah, thanks one more. And uh, 
we look forward in uh, enjoying our <laughs> United Cameroon. An innovative conference. An innovative, <laughs> yeah, we'll look <laughs> eventually. Thank you very much, uh, <laughs> Senior. Thank you very much, Senior. I would like to thank uh, my media prime for bringing up <laughs> such <laughs> topics. Uh, yeah. For us to educate ourselves sure. on yeah. issues that uh, many people never understood. And I would like an appeal on the government to subsidize my media prime. Because I don't see why this is the best English TV channel which is not being subsidized by the state. It is, we know, we of the English expression would like to talk, our, talk what we feel. Yeah. And for the state to understand it better, a TV station like this needs to be given the possibility yeah. of going further. Because I would have loved that my media prime goes into an Amazonian camp and talk to those people. I would have loved that. Let them see and, it. And, and bring it on air. And bring it on air. Let people see it. I would have loved that those who feel slighted to come up and talk to and them talk, yeah. listen. But at the same time, That's an we should some culture. in this world, we are, not forced, we are not forced to be on the same page. That's yeah, that's we can disagree. Yeah. But as you get up in the morning, this is this my disagreement. I'll tell you, good morning. Sir. Okay. How are you? Thank you very much, gentlemen. All those of you who took our time to watch the program, once again, thank you. We apologize that we started late. And next week edition, we'll be looking at the 1972 referendum. We'll be looking at the 1972 referendum. The, the, what went wrong? What went right? What should we do in terms of moving forward? Every Sunday at exactly 12 to 1:30 is the program rebroadcast. Every Sunday at 10:30, a rebroadcast of this same program, and a rebroadcast on Monday at 9:30, a rebroadcast on Monday at 9:30. It is on our YouTube channel, BT Media Group, on our YouTube channel, BT Media Group, on our Facebook page, My Media Prime. You can visit us on www.btmediagroup.net. Thanks for watching, and goodbye from the town of Douala. No matter the matter, what matter is your matter. <laughs>